Yo, what up everyone? Welcome back to Fandom Frequency. Happy holidays. If you couldn't tell from the decor here, it's full on holiday season and on the channel. We got a lot of cool stuff we've been covering lately. Uh, you know, been a little bit under the weather, but we're getting back into the swing of things and we got some really cool stuff planned for you guys this week all throughout the week leading into Christmas and New Year's and none of that would be possible without my co-host today, Steph, coming back yeah. from the Final Girls once again. Thank Yay. you so much for coming through. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Thank People, you. Yeah, you know, it's always a good episode every <laughs> single time. Seems like it gets better and better. And minus the technical difficulties last time, Pan's Labyrinth. People really seem to enjoy that one. That was a really sick, mm -hmm. sick movie, man. Totally. I have a whole list of Del Toro movies I'm going to start watching now. So definitely uh, converted me over to a fan for sure. <laughs> but today we're not talking about Guillermo del Toro. We're talking about the, uh, um, um, how do I put this, man? I would probably say the most prolific Creator in, in anime, I would say? Probably. Hayao Maybe. Miyazaki. And I think I said it correctly. <laughs> and yeah, so we're talking about Spirited Away, if you couldn't tell from the thumbnails and whatnot. And this is the first time for me, I haven't watched any Miyazaki. She is a Miyazaki uh, stan, if uh, you will. A little bit. Yeah, we got the no face right there. The <laughs> I'll zoom in on that so you guys can see it. Really pretty sick stuff, actually. One of the better anime tats I've seen in person. Thank you. But um, was it all one artist? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sick. Yes, this was Hoser from Empire Tattoo. Oh, sick. Yeah, shoot me stuff. <laughs> throw it in the, throw it in the, I'll throw it in the description for all you tat heads out there. I got nothing. I'm like the day I came out the womb, man. But uh, but yeah, so pretty much we're going to break down this thing and we're going to start off with my girl Steph here and just, you know, just break down your perspective of how you came to this film and just Miyazaki's work in general. Um, actually, this was my gateway to, to nice. Miyazaki. I wasn't one of those people that, um, you know, watched Totoro or mm -hmm. the older ones until after watching Spirited Away. And then I couldn't get enough Miyazaki. I was like, at this time I was, this is when we were, we were renting stuff from yeah, the video store. <laughs> so I remember seeing these in there. Yeah, and I just remember picking up uh, Spirit the the Kate cover for Spirit Away. I'm like, this is really kind of pretty. I'm like, this looks kind of interesting. And I brought it home, and I was just I was absolutely floored by how how beautiful the animation was yeah. and the the attention to detail and even to this day every time I've seen this this movie I don't even know how many times I've watched this movie countless I'm sure yeah absolutely and every time I watch it I see new details in oh, the background wow, okay I mean like in tapestries and this and that it's just like mm. it's like it's just fascinating to see how intricate yeah no that's dope that's... everything is I mean you see the blades of grass blowing in the wind and the same with like the clouds moving in the mm -hmm. sky and it's just yeah it's unlike anything <laughs> yeah you they seen out there before dude like even like because uh people like uh, around like my age toy story was kind of the big first mm -hmm. animated movie for a lot of people my age and that was like oh it's 3d animation it totally revolutionized the game yeah. but this shows people and i think i've always been a f more of a fan of 2d yeah 2d's absolutely. king man because look how this movie doesn't look dated at all i think this movie is about 22 23 years old mm -hmm looks brand new it looks just as good as the latest movie he just put out the boy and the hair on from the trailers I yeah see. except absolutely. you know you didn't have hd at the time but it's like it just looks amazing like you know i've i've gone and seen a lot of his movies though too spirit away included i've gone back and watched them when um, amc puts them out in the oh, theater right. um so i've seen like this one i've seen house moving castle ponyo a bunch of the other ones in <laughs> on on the big screen and yeah even for how old they are mm -hmm. they're still even on the big screen they're still the color is there the everything's there it's and the movement is so fluid yeah. in it, but it still looks so classic anime to me because i think mm -hmm. even some of the animes i love like some of the talking could be a little stilted or certain like movements mm -hmm. and things are like when they're zoomed out they won't have as much detail you don't get any of those shots in this no ever. absolutely not everything's absolutely detailed not. and they've even done a good job i don't know if you watched it in english or in japanese i did it in english this time okay because um, I know Disney took over the the dubbing. Yeah, and they actually did. I I started. I, I've watched it both ways, mm -hmm. and these are some of the few movies I can watch in we're, English we're, as well we're, because we're. they did such a good job at uh, dubbing it. Mm -hmm. it. It did feel that way. I was like, these performances yeah. and the dialogue did feel right. 
and it still met, and it still met, it still matched the mouth movements mm-hmm. and and it felt right for the characters. It didn't feel mm-hmm. like because sometimes I've watched certain dubs or certain things where it feels like it's too Americanized the way they're talking, mm-hmm. where it's like I don't know, it doesn't feel like quite the way they wrote it. Where this one, it just felt very natural to me. Yeah, I definitely on my rewatch, I want to watch the sub. That's usually how I do it for most um, anime stuff, unless it's like a foreign film, and that's the only way. It's oh, in. did you recognize Lin's voice? I feel like I did, but I couldn't place it. Who was um, it? Since you watched the um, the English version, yeah. it was um, Meg from Hercules. Oh my gosh! Yeah, what's that, that woman's name? But yeah, I don't she's know, excellent. but yeah, yeah, she's the same same one. It's not Tara Strong, right? I don't know her name, but yeah, but it's the same um, voice actor. Well, editing magic, as I always say, <laughs> the answer will be here, but I don't know it yet. But that's freaking great, man. But uh, but yeah, but um. Damn, I forgot my next And they also part. do the have the voice of um he was Ham also on um on Toy Story, but he oh. he was from Cheers. Yeah, for, he just passed away a couple Yeah, years ago. exactly. And he he plays the part where um they're in the bathhouse and when No Face comes in with all the money and he's telling everybody, Hey, we got you know, Oh, this guy. he's <laughs> that guy that's like, Hey, make way. Our yeah. guest is here. Yeah, and he's kinda like 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 chanting and like uh, kinda singing like right Yeah, uh huh. I heard that dude was a complete asshole, but very good actor. <laughs> very good actor. I wouldn't know. I've never met him. It's either him or, it's either him or Mr. Potato Head, one of those guys. Good actor, but apparently he's an asshole. It's like Chevy Chase. You know the deal. I uh, I, I didn't know that one either. Yeah. He uh, he got kicked off community because he was being such an asshole to people. Oh how funny! Yeah, well He's maybe had that yeah, well maybe it makes more more sense uh, the whole reason why I, I when I went and saw um, Steve Martin and Martin Short there was no Chevy Chase. That's a thing. <laughs> yeah, they're not cool with him anymore because those guys were like tight back in the eighties yeah. and stuff, but now they're not cool with him at all. Um, him and Bill Murray had problems on um, on uh, Caddyshack and stuff like that. He's very oh. difficult to work with apparently, but. Miyazaki is not, other than the perfectionism of it and everything oh, like God. that. Everyone reveres and respects this guy. I fucking revere mm-hmm. and respect this guy at this point because the work is there. Now, I'm not going to lie. This wasn't necessarily... Um, it didn't necessarily blow me away. But I think... Really? But, but, don't get me wrong, y'all. This thing was freaking awesome. I, I remember for like the first 20, 30 minutes, I was like, I don't really know if I'm going to dig this as much. But once the story really gets going and she gets really entrenched into the world and meets Haku... Uh, Haku, and you really get the ball rolling. But you know, it, I feel though that that first twenty minutes where it still lulls is so mandatory. Yes. To find out how she, because it's a character. It, you, it's a character. It, arc, it right? full on builds Chihiro's character mm-hmm. because you you watch her go from the snotty nosed brat exactly to she it's kind of like a coming of age mm-hmm. yeah for sure it's definitely like i feel like a coming of age story yeah. and i don't know if they have that genre and trust the intuition there. of children yes exactly <laughs> dude that was one thing that was cracking me up in the beginning i'm like usually it's the other way around over here yeah you know i'm like usually the parents are the ones telling them not to do this stuff she's like yo this looks creepy why are we going in there and they're like come on we'll check it out Let, like, let's eat this food that's just see, here and nobody's serving it no one's gonna have food that good laying around and let you eat it for free i was like that's your main problem right there <laughs> now if you caught me knee deep in the munchies i probably would have been a pig myself but but it's like come on man get your shit together but that's the thing about this movie that i love the they most they should have just brought some tupperware and foil and gotten you know no, got brought their it. stuff and took off exactly <laughs> they really had to stay there i was like dude i'm getting out of here this place is empty it's creepy i'm not doing it but once this ball gets rolling and you really get immersed into whatever they call this world it's freaking awesome, dude. And the more the movie goes along, it just gets better and better and better. And just seeing her, mm-hmm. uh, Chihiro's full-on character arc, that's the stuff that really gets me into these kind of things. Yeah. It's just character arcs and character developments and seeing them go from one point to another. Yeah, because she turns out to be a really strong young lady. Mm-hmm, for sure. And very compassionate yeah. and goes out of her way to help Haku when she mm-hmm. literally had no 100% definitive thing to trust him or anything like that. Mm-hmm. She put her neck out for the guy. And I thought that was just awesome. And just getting to see all the different creature designs in all the different aspects to the world that were so similar to ours, but so mm-hmm. dissimilar at the same time, yes. is great. And I love how everything's so creepy, yet kind of um, like, like Kamaj- adorable at like the same Kamaji. time. Like Kamaji. Yeah. You wouldn't exactly. expect this big arachnid-looking dude to be very, very warm and inviting. Look kind of like Dr. Robotnik. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, because I, I, I don't know, you, you, you learn he has like a grandfatherly 
Yeah, exactly. Roll like when Ch- Chihiro goes down there and he covers her up with the blanket and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and gets her the train tickets and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And just the way that all plays out, I thought was so really well done. But mm-hmm. the thing I, w- I wanted to say too is it didn't blow me away, but I get it. I think if I had watched this years ago and it was mm-hmm. one of the first things that got me into this kind of stuff, it probably would have blown me away, especially when mm-hmm. I was a kid, because I really used to love um, fantasy and and sci-fi and things like that mm-hmm. and when I was younger. So it definitely would have blown me away. But this is definitely. One of the dopest animated movies I've probably ever mm-hmm. seen, though. I will say that. Like, it's really, really cool. And I totally get why people revere the Studio mm-hmm. Ghibli stuff so much. And I want to see the museum in Japan now. Like, I want to dive mm-hmm. all into it, dude. Because I've seen some of Mononoke as well. And that was pretty badass from what I remember. Oh, you have to watch the whole thing of Mononoke. Yeah. We might have to do a Mononoke one for now, That's for too. sure in yeah. the cards. Because <laughs> um, that one and probably Howl's Moving Castle. Because I like Which is the, another the beautiful vibes. one. But, uh, but yeah, man. And, and just the uh, and the overall like characters, too. like And then getting into No-Face. That was so rad. Because I remember seeing him pop up you know, every now and again throughout the film. And I'm like, oh, yeah, the No-Face guy. What's his He was deal? watching her. Exactly, and I'm like, wait, and he is was he kind a of good thing? By her. And that was what I was thinking. I was like, is he like a guardian angel? Like, what's the deal here? And I like that mystery that Miyazaki sets up mm-hmm. and pays off so well. Then he gets into the bathhouse and shit hits the fan. This oh. was eating dudes. Yeah, because the bathhouse drove the bathhouse. He had kind of he had like an innocence about him. Yeah, but the something about the bathhouse and the energies of the bathhouse and the greed and everything else going on in there. It kind yeah. of took him over. May- oh, I see. So maybe it's more of a thematic kind of thing. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like showing this, this, the effects of greed on people and stuff like that, where they can turn out one way and then they mm-hmm. get the certain job or they get the record deal or something and then they become completely yeah. consumed by it. So that probably is what they're going for. Whereas like, and Chihiro wasn't phased by it. No. She was just like, no, I'm, I'm here to take care of this. I'm here to get my mom and dad back. And I was like, damn, is she going to get them back? Because it seemed that I was like, at some point, like, just, you're not getting nobody back, dude. Like, yeah. you're screwed. And that was the thing I liked about it. And that's what I love about um, Eastern filmmaking. Everything mm-hmm. doesn't all, like, things are hopeful, but they but they really make it, uh, they really put a lot of, um, like, a, what's the word? They put a lot of suspense into it. Absolutely. And you never know where it's going to go when it's not predictable. That's the thing I like with this movie. It's so unpredictable of how things are going to play out. Because Haku, I thought, was going to be like this total like villain that was like trying to lure her in. Not the case at all. And it's crazy when you figure out what he actually was. And I was like, When he's what? talking about, oh yeah, I've known you for a really long time. And it's like, how? I would say that the whole movie. I was like, dude, are they going to explain this? I'm like, come on, Miyazaki. And then that's when you realize he, he was actually the river spirit that she fell into. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Damn. Which is now dried up. So that's why he's not able to find his home. Because his home was the, the actual <laughs> river. And I was like, dude, brilliant. Because that was yeah. going to be like a complaint of mine. I was like, what the hell does this mean? Like, where is this going? Yeah. And then when you get to the end of the film, when she, when she, you know, grabs him in the sky and helps him from Which was a really that. cool scene, too, where you see her tears yeah. flying in the sky. Is, it's so cool. Yeah. It's so cool. And, I, and, the, and the whole, um, like, the whole romantic relationship, I thought, was so well done. And yeah. so, like, uh, organic well, to the story. Well, to me, too, I like the fact that it was still, it, it was still an innocent. Yeah. I love the fact that her love for him and vice versa, it still had very much of a childlike innocence to it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like they weren't necessarily in love, but they loved each other. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And that's cool as hell. It's like, and I've had relationships with people like that throughout mm-hmm. my life. And I think that's really cool to put into film and especially kids. Mm-hmm. Like you kind of have that bond with people, um, you know, dude, female, whatever you are and whatever they are, you just kind of have that bond and yeah. nothing's ever going to break it, you know? So that was just freaking awesome. And, mm-hmm. uh, um, definitely don't want to go out of this thing without talking about Yubaba and Zaniba. And that was a whole cool dynamic too because you never knew who to trust, who's good, who's bad. But they're kind of both good and bad in a certain sense, right? Exactly. It's like it's... they're two sides. of They're both the same side or they're both <laughs> sides of the coin. You know what I mean? Like no one's truly bad. No one's truly good. Mm-hmm. And that gray area with that character was so awesome. And the design is so like creepy, but like you can't take your eyes away from her at the same time. Oh, with that big ass head and nose? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> big ass baby. Oh, the big ass baby. I thought she was going to say, hey, that's a big ass baby. I, I, I love that. <laughs> I like big ass baby, though, as, as big ass hamster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I don't know if he's a hamster or, or actually a rat because he does have a little tiny yeah. tail. It's a little, little tiny, tiny tail. And I like the little sound effect of them like floating around the whole time. <laughs> that was like sticking out to me the whole time. I was like, oh, that's a good sound. Yeah, design, and it's man. crazy how you Baba's henchmen and stuff became her friends exactly and i was like huh i was like that's interesting yeah. and it just like i said just completely takes you in a whole new direction i thought that was gonna be the evil witch and she's gonna have to fight her mm-hmm. to get her parents back and all this stuff and i was like nope 
We're not doing any of that shit. Yeah. We're not getting no Shonen Jump fights up in here. No, nope, no, nope. and that's that's you. where we ended up leaving uh, No Face. Exactly, and I was like, "Damn, dude, he's freaking out," and he's all like, "All right, see you later." Yeah. And I was like, "Damn, like this is crazy." See, this is see, this is what they pe- were praising about the Babadook, but done right. All right, yeah, that's right. I'm a Babadook hater. You heard it here <laughs> first. I do not like that movie. <laughs> Which uh, one? Ba- the Babadook. Oh, I like the Babadook. The the woman in that. We, we watched that movie, and yeah, that movie that movie was performance. Crazy. That woman killed it. So did, the, so did the kid. The kid was good, but he annoyed me. But he was a good actor. Mm-hmm. I will say that. He did what he was hired to do. Ex- but absolutely. he annoyed the hell out of me. <laughs> and the monster looked stupid to me. It looked like Tim Burton drawings in like sixth grade before he became good. And then the whole, oh, I'm going to keep the monster with me at the end and all that stuff. It's like, I get what you're doing thematically, but it's still kind of lame. And it didn't, didn't work for me. This movie, I liked it. this thing was much better. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go, you can go watch our, our review of it on... Um, oh, yeah. Final girls of the Babadook and watch me get freaked the fuck out. Yes. There is some genuinely <laughs> creepy moments in that. I will give it that. Like the, the whole Babadook. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was, I was all, I was curled up in the chair. No, I don't blame you. It, mm-hmm. it, it is, it's creepy till I see it. And I think maybe that's just me. I'm desensitized <laughs> to everything at this point. You got to get really balls of the wall before anything affects me. Yeah, I'm not quite that desensitized yet. True, I forget no. that. So you get you get both sides here. You get you get both sides here. You know, you get the scared cats, and then you get the they possibly might need help. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, so that's definitely the size that we're both coming on, man. But uh, oh yeah, one other thing I definitely got to mention because y'all know I love music. The music in this film it's so pretty phenomenal. That's the one element to me that's like the best part about it and is it, the music and, and the sound design. And it fits everything so beautifully. Mm-hmm. And it has this yeah. epic nature to it while also having like this somber kind of like, uh, kind of reminds me of a lot of the music they used to use for like the Pokemon movies and things like that in the early 2000s. And I think they mm-hmm. were probably pulling a lot of inspiration from Miyazaki at the time. Most Because it just has like this, um, this beautiful, elegant quality. Like you could see this at the Sydney Theater or something like that. You know what I mean? But it's also mm-hmm. this really trippy creepy type of music at the same time and i'm like it's just amazing how the the music is a character like the music amplifies the movie and i feel like the movie actually even as good as it is wouldn't be as good without it no absolutely you know what i mean and i think that's true great scores and that's what you always go for as a musician is to compliment whatever visuals you're doing it on and to me i I can't i I wish i'd have got the name of the composer i'll get that in post and put that in here because i definitely want to shout that guy or girl out because wow Mm -hmm. that was amazing and yeah, I remember um, the end. Of just the the always with me. Yeah, it's really so great pretty. Track. It's... I even I let that whole thing play when I was done. I was about to turn it off. I was like, oh man, that's really it's like, good. This is actually really pretty. Yeah, it's, like, it's like it's just um, it's great stuff. It's not something I'm like you're gonna have on my Spotify liked all the time. But it's like when the when the mood is right and when you're in the right mood or you're trying to like do some writing or work on a project. I'm like I can see myself throwing this on. It is in my likes on. <laughs> I feel you. And on my Spotify. <laughs> I was going to say, but I need to dig through it because I might end up adding something in there, man. But it's just freaking rad, dude. Like, uh, it's, it's a really cool movie. Um, I mean, there's any like um, like standout moments in there that you wanted to, to discuss or anything that yeah, there's, you noticed Oh, there's so the many. There's so many. Well, Miyazaki, he has um, most of his movies, they have elements of, there's two elements in each one of his movies. One is flight. Which you see with Haku, that is very and true. where she's falling on with him on in the sky and stuff like that, because uh, when Haku turns into the dragon, he flies. Yeah, and, and then you have the flying um, pieces of paper. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, the with the paper cut. Yeah. And yeah. That was so interesting. I was like, oh, what's going on? It was on super that? cool. And then I I actually love that scene where you have all the pieces of paper just. <laughs> it's like it's weird. It's like whoa. It's like and then you're like you're yeah. like confused and like I was like oh is this like, like a danger it or is this not? It's like it's weird. I'm like it's like yeah. It's like dreams come to life or something. So you have there there there's where we have our element of flight, but he also also always has an element of. Um, like, like world issues, like mm. pollution, yeah. and this and this and this and this, that which you, I've heard. and you get the you get the pollution part when the um the other river spirit comes into the bathhouse, yeah, and they think it's a stink spirit until she she pulls the the bicycle out of it and you see all of the all, that stuff all the litter, out. and this is why he was coming there was because he was so polluted he needed to be cleaned up basically exactly. 
And I was like, damn, dude. I was like, that's actually like really hits home, man. Yeah. It's crazy how 20-some years later, we're still not learning these lessons, y'all. Absolutely not. Oh, I mean, I can't really say anything. I'm over here. I'm still drinking my water True. bottles. and I, I, I definitely, <laughs> definitely have a problem. But it's just like, can someone with more power and resources than me mm-hmm. please do something about this? Because it's like, people have been talking about this forever. But yeah, that's actually a really good uh, point to make, too. Like, I think all his work kind of always goes All into of it that does. in some way or another because more than no okay, I remember that kind of thing in there with like animals and in nature and yeah, stuff like yeah, that yeah because of what the... I faintly remember oh yeah we'll, we'll go into that one we'll, oh we'll, yeah we'll, I'm, I'm gonna make him sit down and watch the whole thing hey you're not gonna have to force me too much <laughs> I actually really want to go back to it because I remember liking it as a kid it's I so just, good I just didn't have access to it at the time and it's so. probably Miyazaki's bloodiest movie yeah, that I remember. And I remember yeah. that appealed to me at the time. <laughs> that was right around when I started getting into horror and stuff like okay. that. So I was like, oh, yeah, this is pretty badass. And my yeah. cousin was like, oh, you're getting a little older. I'll start showing you some of these more brutal animes and things like that. Yeah, it's it's hands down his most brutal. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, more so than, yeah, because even, yeah, Nausicaa's not hmm. as brutal or anything either. Gotcha. Um, it does make sense. Um, yeah, but so, yeah, it's. I don't know. It's just so. And does much No Face have me. anything to do with like Asian culture? Like, is there any? I feel like I've seen that before, <sighs> or something with the mask looks familiar. I don't, I don't know if I'm just. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know if I'm just being racist. I no. don't know. I, I I wish I could tell you, and I wish I I I should have looked that up. Oh no, that's all good. You know. I I love him though. For I mean, obviously. He's, yeah. For, he's for my his own thing. he's my favorite in there him and and i love the sit sprites yeah yeah because yeah, cool. they're cute I, I loved um in the very just even in the very beginning when chihiro's trying to figure out what's going on and she she tries helping out the one that accidentally drops it on top of itself and it's struggling it's all, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so she she picks it up and then you realize how heavy they actually are i know i was like oh that's a trip because because they're carrying them around like they're nothing they're these little teeny tiny sit sprites it's and, like ants yeah, and yet she picks this thing up and she's struggling to carry it over to the boiler yep. to toss it in. And then I thought it was funny. She finally finishes and she's like, whew, I got that done. And they all start dropping them on themselves. <laughs> I'm like, what? What are you doing? I'm like, what are these things doing, man? Yeah, because you know, they were trying to get her to do their job. Exactly. They're like, oh, screw that. All right, you get rid of the rest of them, homie. Yeah, yeah. But, but then, I'm working here for 10 years, kids. But then you can't there. help but love them, too, when they're... When the, like when Lynn comes in and feeds them like the, the the sugar sprinkles and yeah they're like yo hook it up <laughs> and they're cute yeah, <laughs> they're, you know you gotta have I've that. got them on here too oh snap I just noticed that yeah <laughs> oh, yeah well I probably didn't know what it was the last time I seen it but that's pretty probably rad. not <laughs> that's cool man and like I said I don't know what it is with me and Pokemon but these these creatures in here keep reminding me of Pokemon <laughs> but, um, but uh but yeah man it's freaking um Hayao Miyazaki the guy's a freaking legend. Absolutely. I just can't wait to dive into more of his stuff. And you guys definitely are going to want to stay tuned because we're going to have Princess Mononoke next. And then, you know, we'll, we'll keep moving from there and moving yes. and grooving, man. Because you got My Neighbor Todoro, uh, oh, so House of Castle. Uh, you got the latest one, The Boy and the Heron. So we might mm-hmm. do that one. Um, but yeah, man, there's like so many cool Miyazaki um, um, things to do out there, you know. Uh, I know this isn't Miyazaki, but Akira is another big one. Akira is great. Yep, I heard about it. I'm. I'm you haven't seen Akira? Nope. Wow. I started it. I remember like a handful of years ago. We and I definitely need to catch him up on some yeah, of our anime. I like, I'd even be down to do a reaction to that. That's what I was thinking about trying to do this year on the channel. Maybe yeah. do like a uh, first time, like full reaction to something. It's been a long time since I've watched that one, but yeah, it's a great one. Yeah, man. And I'm a boy, Drew. He loves anime. I was like, maybe I have to get the three of us together. And, and I think a yeah, yeah. And then you have to also watch like then you're gonna have to go into Vampire Hunter D and Ninja Scroll and I yep. can't let you borrow Ninja Scroll. Yep, I was gonna say that's my next yeah. one. I'm definitely gonna check that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you spirit away back. But I, like, I got to check out Ninja Scroll though, because I've heard a lot of things about that so throughout the years from like my cousin and my buddy Drew. So no, no children that, that are here talking, what listening to us because this is Spirited Away. Ninja Scroll, you might want to wait till you're a little bit older for that one. Okay. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what the youngest demographic we have on the channel is, but yeah, if you're under the age of like 12 or 13, yeah, maybe talk to your parents first. It is the 2020s. It's not like back in the day, but uh. But yeah, man, but Spirited Away, definitely child-friendly, but I think if you're around five or six, it might be a little too creepy or intense for you. I, I do feel like... I would be okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I would have yeah. been fine around that age. I would have been. I would have actually been fine with it that age. Same. I was yeah. going to say, I wasn't really too scared of like anime and stuff. It was always more like live action stuff. Yeah. So I was around like nine or ten or something. But, um, but yeah, man, so freaking Spirited Away, all-time classic. 
I yeah. definitely enjoyed the hell out of it. It's definitely going to be one of my favorite animated movies going forward. And obviously, you know, Steph loves the absolute hell out of it. It's freaking Miyazaki. She's already in for it. And thanks to her, we checked it out. But make sure you drop your comments down below. Do you think the movie's overrated? Do you think it is the best animated movie of all time? Do you think it's Miyazaki's best movie? Because that's something I hear debated all the time. Is it your favorite oh. Miyazaki movie? I think it is my personal favorite only because... Oh, no, yeah. You know, like, it's hard. <gasps> it's hard because... Because Mononoke probably because it's dope. Probably because this is my gateway. But I'm also a huge Kiki Delivery Service fan. Oh, and... Really and I love Hell's Moving Castle. And I, I actually have a Gigi from Kiki's Delivery Service here. I have a Princess Mononoke on my thigh. I'm just, I have my little baby Totoro here. Um, I don't know, just so many, there's so many good ones. It's like, and I like them for different reasons. It's almost like a Tarantino like, like, conversation or something. Like, exactly. Like, even like Castle in the Sky, Nausicaa, Por Porco Rosso. You would like Porco, Porco Rosso. Rosso. I think that's the only one you said I have not heard. That's a really, that's the one with the pig and he's a pilot. Oh, from like, I've from seen like the cover. World War II type era. Yeah, I have seen the cover. Um, so good. And in the English version, I believe it's, I think it's, is it Billy? Who who does it? Oh, God. Now, now I'm just going to drive me nuts because it's. It's it's a big name that does his voice. Yeah, remind me later. I'll throw it in the edit. Yeah, I'll throw it in the edit for sure. Yeah, that that does the English voice. Um, I think Christian Bale does one of those movies, doesn't he? Yes, he's Howl. Yeah, that's what he's I Howl. <laughs> I read that. I was reading through IMDb or something one time. Yeah, he's I'm like, how's that? What do you know? Yeah, freaking Christian Bale doing everything, man. Mm -hmm. Guys all everywhere. Yeah, he's Howl. Where are the drugs going? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. So like I said before, make sure you comment down below. With your favorite Miyazaki picks. We're going to have some more Miyazaki content on the channel in 2024 with us. So make sure you guys are staying tuned for all that stuff. Um, and make sure you go on over to the Final Girls. If you love watching reaction videos, if you love horror content, make sure you go over there and check the ladies out. They're Watch us get scared. Growing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and they're expanding the team. They're doing a lot more stuff. They've had so much growth over the last year. And all you guys that are Final Girls supporters have been jumping over here to... Phantom Frequency and showing love. We I we appreciate you guys so much, and Thank you. you know we're just bringing our communities together, and hopefully we do a lot more stuff um, in the future. You know us, Final mm -hmm. Girls, all that stuff. Do some reactions maybe on the channel. You know that get the right cool. setup going, but. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff. want to experiment and do some really cool um, stuff next year, guys. So thanks for being along for the ride. Thanks for sticking through to the end of this video. Like we said, we got more Christmas content coming at you. That's right. We're talking about the best Christmas movie that's not fully just about Christmas. I'm talking about Die Hard, baby. Bruce Willis classic, 1988. We're going to be talking about Die Hard on the channel. So make sure you check that out. That should be coming out Christmas Eve. So make sure you got that underneath your stock and stuff right there. yippee Kaye. yippee Kaye, motherfuckers. <laughs> make sure you stay in tune and you ain't sleeping on any of that dopeness. For Steph, for myself, one love. Thanks for checking it out. And we'll catch you on the next one.